Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to talk about the System 3 Fluid Acrylics, different ways that you can use them, um, what makes them special and exciting, and showing you a piece that I made using entirely the System 3 Fluid Acrylics. So the System 3 Fluid Acrylics are durable and flexible and are perfect for multiple services. You can use stone, wood, canvas, paper, textiles, whatever you're looking for. This is painting is done on canvas and I started out the painting by using the System 3 Fluid White and putting it all over the painting. Then I started dropping in the actual colors of the System 3 Fluid Acrylic. Because the System 3 Fluid Acrylic is so pigmented and has such a high pigment load, it has a really high tinting strength, but it also has a fluid consistency. You can use it in a variety of different applications. So you can use it to paint like normal, you can use it to do kind of like a pre-painting or an underpainting, but you can also use it for pouring and puddling, dragging, layering, glazing, all of that good stuff. And today I wanted to start out by doing a poured background. So I started, like I said, using that white fluid as the base. This gives it something to pour into and just kind of creates a slick surface for everything to pour onto. Then I drew these like little lines going back and forth of different blue colors because I wanted to imitate a ocean or waves. So that's why I chose those colors and that's why I went back and forth horizontally so that it would kind of create a wave-like effect. Then I went around and started just tilting the canvas in different directions. Whenever things wouldn't blend out quite as much as I wanted, I just used a spray bottle to add a little bit more water and fluidity. And then I would also use the paintbrush with some water on to drip onto it. So you can really adjust the fluidity of these paints depending on how much water you want to add. So you can get them to be really, really drippy or just a little bit drippy. It just really depends on what you're looking for. If you want more control, you can get that. If you want less control, I tend to be like a less control kind of person. I want the paints to do what they want to do. You can really get that as well. So the way, way that I got that was putting all of those colors in the white, dropping them in there, adding some water, and then tipping it around. And as you can see, I started to create a really, really pretty kind of effect. And I really liked it. So one thing that I noticed about these was they have this really nice skinny nib and so I was actually able to use that to draw these wave-like patterns in the wet acrylic. So this was a really really cool technique that I've used a couple times in painting since where you can kind of use the second paint to draw into a wet painting and it creates a really cool effect because it can it keeps its shape and its form, but it does blur out a little bit and create some really interesting softness. So that's what it looked like when it was dry and I used the silver so it really popped out. After that, I decided to go in and use some glazing techniques. As I said, these are super, super pigmented. They have a really intense pigment load, so they work really well for tinting. I was only had to use just a tiny little bit in order to tint that, and I added in a little bit more of a darker teal color. Then I went over and decided to do a couple more of these kind of pour type things, but I wanted to use a hairdryer to create this explosive kind of effect at the bottom. So I started with the white and then I poured in other colors such as silver and a couple teal colors. And then I used a hairdryer to really push out from the bottom to create these little poofs of explosion um, that were kind of supposed to imitate waves and light coming through the water. And so I blew that all the way up and you can kind of see it created these beautiful trails of color. And I just kind of played around with that until I felt happy with it. I wanted to add some more silver into the center. So I added some silver and continued blowing at it with my hairdryer until I was satisfied. This is a really, really fun technique and it can be used really easily to create flowers as well if you just create a couple puddles of color and then you blow into it with a hairdryer or just your own breath, you can create some really beautiful little flower-like um, textures. So that was something that I've also used this technique for, but um, in this case, I'm using it to create these almost wave-like water-crashing type um, vibes. 
System 3 also has a pouring medium and you can mix these in with that pouring medium to create a bunch of different effects. You could use that for doing what I'm doing instead of or in addition to the water. And you can also use it to really work with those glazing effects. If you want it even thinner, you can use that to make it even thinner and glaze with it. So there's a lot of different options when you're looking at these. They're essentially really, really highly concentrated pigments. So you can really mix them with so many different things and use them in so many different ways. Right now I'm using them to create an underpainting for the fish that I want to paint on top of this. I like fish. I think fish are fun to paint. I think fish are quite cool. So I thought I would paint a fish um, on top of this. So I started by creating the overall shape of the fish using a darker blue. And then I added in a little bit of white just to figure out where some of the basic highlights would be and to keep some distinction when I was painting the body. And once I had the overall underpainting in, I started going in with a couple different more colors just to kind of add a little bit of opacity to it and start building the base for the final layers. So I'm just establishing where those highlights are. I'm not being too complex with color at this point. I'm mostly just establishing um, the overall form of the fish and I'll go in and add in more colors and details um, during the next layer. So now I'm getting in some more of those shadows because I, it's definitely getting very mid-tone here. In terms of your paintings, you want to try to create contrast, not just in color, but also within um, shading and the tones of your painting, whether they're light or dark. And one thing that is especially important in creating monochromatic paintings like this painting is to remember that value. So I really wanted to make sure that I still kept some of those darks in there. So I kept going back in with that dark, although at some point you do kind of have to wait for your painting to dry if you really want to get that dark, dark color, because if you're adding a dark color on top of a light color that's still wet, you are inevitably going to blend it in with that color. So right now I definitely want to keep the blending going, um, but to build up those really, really dark, sharp areas, I need to wait for it to be completely dry before I can do that. Now I'm getting close to being done with the underpainting. You can see I've really mostly used it to establish the overall form of the fish. Once I have the form of the fish established, I want to do some more layering. So I turned it upside down and I got the top of it all wet, put in some blue and put in some white and started dripping that down. The reason that I did this is because I like to layer different layers of pores in between the actual painting layers itself. I think it adds some really, really interesting depth and just kind of just kind of these layers that are still visible and it shows a lot of the like history of the painting I just think it's a really really interesting technique so it's something that I wanted to incorporate once I had that layer put on and everything was wet I went ahead and outlined the fish in that silver I didn't use a paintbrush I just went in with the actual really fine nib and then I used a paintbrush to kind of smudge it out a little bit but I thought this would add a nice silvery halo around the fish kind of like the fish was glowing as the light hit it it. And I wanted to do that during the wet on wet so that it really blurred out. Once that was all dry, I went back in to reestablish my darks and add in some details and different color definition. So I started with that really, really dark color, adding in some details to that top fin, going in with a lighter color and trying to get in a nice little shine on that fin just where the light is hitting it because fish are shiny. And that's one of the reasons that I like them because I am a magpie and I like shiny things. So I started by adding in that detail and then started moving to glazing in some more layers of color on top of the actual fish itself. By glazing and adding in these thin translucent layers, I'm still retaining that shading that I laid down beforehand, but I'm adding in different colors, darkening certain tones and brightening certain tones while still retaining that previous kind of base layer. So by working in all these different layers, it just builds up that depth. It makes it easier for us to work on and it's going to really help you break down establishing, okay, I'm gonna establish my shading now. Okay, now I'm gonna start tinting in colors and continue Continue to define that shading kind of helps you break things down so you're not trying to deal with everything at once you can kind of focus on building the form and then you can focus in on adding some color in then you can make sure that those two things the shading and the color are combined and then you can go in and add in any final detail for me that's like the scales all of the little like folds and wrinkles in the fins of the fish that kind of stuff so that's kind of the process that I use when I'm painting is starting with this underpainting moving into glazing on the colors and then brightening up that contrast and adding in those details. 
As you can see, these are super pigmented, so I'm able to build up quite a decent opacity with them. Um, even though you can use them for glazing, you can still make them really, really opaque depending on how much paint you use and how much water you use. So they really are a super versatile paint because of how pigmented they are and because of the consistency. I'm still working on getting those details in, but I'm finally starting to go in and add in some little scale details by using a darker color and a kind of dabbing motion to create a little bit of texture. And also just adding in the wee little eyes um, while I can and adding in some more of a highlight on the nose where the light would catch it because I always forget that fish kind of do have a facial structure. They're not just a blob. So I'm trying to get a little bit of that nose facial structure um, of the fish and um, create a little bit more realism that way. Just kind of adding in the little highlights on the eyes as well and those little details on the fins, making him nice and shiny. And then I'll go in and keep working on those scales using this dagger brush from Princeton. I'm using the very, very tip of it to add in these light little scales, just using light dabbing motions um, with a lighter color. I don't have too much of that color on my uh, paintbrush. I just have a little bit so I'm creating a very light texture that's still going to show through all of that beautiful shading and color below it but just kind of imitate the light um, scattering on top of those scales. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about how my fish is looking, so I decide to add in a couple little bubbles, and I do this by just using the white and then dropping a little bit of water actually in the center of it, and then drying off my paintbrush and lifting the center so that the center of the bubble is a little bit lighter than the outside of the bubble. I wait for it to dry, spray the entire thing, and then I start by redefining those wave lines that I had created earlier. They were a little indented because I had did a wet on wet technique, so I was able to find them really easily and the paint just kind of sat in the indents. And then I sprayed it with some water so I could get a little bit of dripping. Um, I love dripping and I wanted to create a little bit more softness and a little bit of that silver kind of dripping down and adding to the texture and overall mess messiness of the piece. I wanted a nice combination of some messiness with the texture, but also some controlled painting on the fish. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. And I also love metallic and sparkle. So I always feel like it's a good idea to add more metallic to your painting. That's just me. I love how it looks. After that, I wanted to tint a couple areas so that it kind of looked like it was underwater and there were a couple like darker areas of water in front of the fish, um, just kind of masking certain areas. So I used a decent bit of water and just a little bit of the color because like I've said, they are super, super pigmented. And then I just kind of glazed on top of that using a bit of a paper towel to lift up certain areas. And I just did that adding in these streaks of lighter color over the top until I felt happy with how it looked looked. And this is kind of a process that's just, you know, you put it on, you take it off, you put it on, you take it off until it looks the way that you want it to. Then I went in with the color and added a little bit more water to add in some more drippiness to it because I wanted these front pieces to be a little bit more drippy than they were. So I added in more water and started um, trying to define those a little bit more. And um, this was definitely a tricky part of the piece like because I didn't want to add too much, but I didn't want there to be too little. I still wanted it to be noticeable. Um, but after some time, I was happy with how it came out. Once I'd done all that, I went in for, I believe, the final layer on the fish using some darker colors to glaze in where the shadows are, and then just going in with some really bright white to get in the final, final little dots of highlights on those scales, um, bringing back anything that had been a little too covered by the previous layers that we just put in, and um, just overall creating that final uh, view of the fish. I'm going back in using some more translucent um, layering to add in just some final drips towards the top and layer in a little bit more color to the actual fish itself. I wanted to add in a little bit more of that green color. So I just used it really lightly on top. Again, adding in just those final little touches that you add in towards the end of the painting as you're noticing little things that you want to tweak and you want to fix um, that will make it all hold in together. And then the final thing I did was add in a little bit of splatter because I love a good splatter and I hadn't done that yet. So I thought I would add in a little splatter to imitate kind of bubbles and dust in the ocean. And then I used this really awesome angled brush to sign in. 
That is the piece that I created using the Daler Rowney Fluid Acrylics by System 3. These are amazing acrylics. They have a highly intense pigment load, like I said, high tinting strength and can be used for so many different things. So I hope this inspired and helped you. Thanks for watching.